All right, let's talk about the uh, receive mechanism. So we were transmitting last time, which is fairly straightforward. It's just a printf. Uh, we set up last time, which is kind of always the same. Uh, now we want to receive. So in order to receive, fortunately, you don't actually have to understand the underlying at all. Uh, you just need to know how the code works, right, which is nice. So the code, the, what we're going to do is we're going to do some displaying to the LCD. So actually, before I get started with Rx, um, let's start with some LCD things. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, you know, include the LCD module. Uh, I want to make some more variables. So I'm going to make an Rx counter um, and a Tx counter. And then I'm going to make line 1 and line 2, which is things we've done for the LCD. I'm also going to um, initialize my LCD. And then before I do a transmit, I'm going to add this block of code. Um, and we'll look at it again once I type it. But it's a fairly simple thing. So let's go ahead. You can use this slide as your reference. Um, and let's kind of prepare this project uh, for the LCD. So what I want to do is I want to say new LCD module.c, take out the word new. This is stuff we've done many times, so I'm kind of glossing over it. Uh, header files, I want to add LCD module.h there, take out the word new. That just makes a copy of those files and puts them into my project. Uh, in order to actually use it, I need to include it in my header files here. So include uh, LCD module.h, note the quotes. I want to make some functions that I'm going to use, or sorry, some variables that I want to use later. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into this area here. I've got an Rx counter, which will be zero. I've got a Tx counter, which will be zero. Oh, you can do those in one line if you wanted, which I did in notes, if you'd like to be fancy. Uh, line one and a line two. And I'm going to go ahead and make these both character arrays that can hold up to 20. All right, so I've got some variables ready that I'll use later. Next, I want to initialize the LCD. So I'm going to say XLCD uh, init. I always like to let auto completion help me. Uh, and clear. All right, so call those two functions. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add information uh, just before I transmit. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to say TX counter uh, plus plus, and then I want to do an S printf. Uh, S printf requires you to have in the standard IO library, but we have that one by default. So what I'd like to do with S printf is I'd like to save this one into line one. And it's going to be a formatted print string that's kind of of this format. Um, so I'm going to print it out as an ASCII character. Uh, and then I'm going to also print it out whatever its actual binary value is. Um, and then I'm going to print out the counter. So I'm going to uh, print out uh, byte to send twice. Uh, once as a character. You know, So if it's like a character 0, it'll display on the screen as a character 0. And then it'll also say the value, which would be 48. Um, and then I also want to print out my TX counter just so I can see how many things I'm printing. So there I've prepared that character array. The next thing I need to do is I need to say XLCD uh, line one home. So go to the start of line one and then XLCD uh, put ROM string, sorry, RAM string. I still get those two confused. Uh, I don't want to put line one. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Uh, I know I did it fast, but that's because you can pause the video as you need uh, to see if you can get this thing together. Uh, so go ahead and get my LCD ready here. And what I want to see is that if I push this uh, button down, um, my counter goes. <laughs> Looks like the last thing I was sending was seven. Yours probably says zero. Uh, seven is actually the value 55. Um, and then you can see my counter is going nuts over there, right? So as I hold this thing down, um, it's just streaming away. Great. Uh, so I would say that part works. Uh, so next I want to um, actually do the Rx stuff. I was just preparing it uh, for this part. 
RX, much like TX, uh, there are a whole bunch of functions um, that you could use. Um, we're not going to use any of them. Um, so no, no functions for receive at all. We're still going to use the open, uh, but that's the only thing we're ever going to use out of that library. Instead, we're going to use interrupts. So what we need to do is we need to first uh, turn interrupts on. So I had turned them off globally, so I'm going to turn them back on globally, make sure that that one doesn't bite me. And then quite simply, uh, in here where it says uh, Rx interrupts off, let's switch that to the word on. Uh, so now they're on. The other thing you should do since you're using priority mode is you should um, type in uh, the, the making of it high priority, uh, which I believe is this guy right here. Um, so this is to make uh, UART RX interrupt a high priority interrupt. All right, that was pretty exciting. To be honest, I think it would default there even without that line, but you should still put it. Um, it's just because it's good practice. All right, then the next thing we have to do is we have to uh, write some code um, inside the high ISR to receive this thing. Uh, so you've got to know, of course, what's the magic name of the flag, uh, which will be in the notes. All right, so we've got those on. Uh, we've put it into high priority, and we've made sure that globally enabling the highs. So in order to actually receive this thing, we have to know the magic flag name. It looks like it's in um, PIR1 bits uh, RCIF. All right, so let's go type that before we forget it. PIR1 bits dot RCIF. So if that uh, flag is present, then of course what we normally would do is we would just reset it immediately. Uh, that actually will not work. There's a safety thing that says you have to have read uh, this register before you can reset it. Um, so that, that's kind of weird, uh, but there's something you have to do first. So you must um, read the value first. So it won't let you reset it until after you've read the value, which is crazy, uh, but that's how it works. Uh, so uh, to read the value, it's in the RC reg, uh, so receive register, and I'm going to store it off to a value called new byte. I'm doing something kind of sneaky here, um, and I'm declaring new byte what appears to be in the middle of the function. It turns out the real rule is it has to be the first thing in a new block. Um, this, this bracket starts a new block, so it's actually totally legal uh, to define that variable here because it's the first thing in a new block, um, which is a little tidbit I didn't tell you before. And then we want to do something uh, with new byte. So this code right here that we just typed, very common, right? So anytime you want to receive something, this is kind of the boilerplate. And then what you do with it will tremendously vary from what we're doing now to what we're going to do in the lab. Uh, but we've essentially just received something. So what we want to do with it here, which will be very different than what the lab is, is we just want to print it, right? So it's very similar to the code we used before. Um, where we just print out this thing and we throw it on the LCD, we're going to put it on line two. So you can pause it and you can type this. I'm going to go type it as well. So RC counter um, plus plus. Oops, what happened here? RX, that was the problem. That's what happened there. Uh, plus plus uh, S printf line two. All right, so I've almost got mine here. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, print out a little Rx message. I'm going to print it out as an ASCII character. If it is ASCII, that'll show up quite nicely. And then I'm going to print what the actual like number being sent is. Uh, and then I'm also going to print out the, um, the counter. So I'm going to put this one on line two. Uh, and then I'll use the same uh, put RAM string. Uh, for line two. All right, so I've got my code ready to go. When I receive something, it's going to print it to the screen. 
Um, by the way, technically doing a lot inside interrupts isn't great practice. Uh, you should really set flags and do it in the main event loop. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to do it in the interrupt. Uh, right now, the byte I'm sending is um, the ASCII character for 7, which is fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, build and run. Um, make sure that your cable is still plugged in, right? So it's still uh, looping back uh, to RX and TX. So as soon as it's ready, both lights should come on. Uh, and when I hit this button, it should send information out uh, and receive it back. You'll notice that the number of bytes sent and the number of bytes received uh, match up just perfectly. Uh, if I pull this cable out, so my RC7 just went out, so I can still transmit, but you can see I'm not receiving anything. If I plug it back in, uh, my RC7 comes on, um, and now you can see that they both go again. If you wanted to send a different value, you could. Um, so right now, I was sending the ASCII value for 7. I'm going to change it just to send a plain old 7. So like an ASCII symbol 7 is really the number 55, and it actually printed up both on my screen. If I print just a plain old 7, um, my LCD won't be able to print that. So if I, if I do this, you can see trying to print uh, 7 as an ASCII character goes very badly. Um, but you can see that's totally a fine thing to do. It's sending a 7, it's receiving a 7, everything's happy. Um, it's just that printing it doesn't work very well. If you wanted to do other crazy things, you could. Um, so instead of sending a single character, let's say I wanted to send a whole string. So I send hello world here. If I count the number of characters here, it's 14. So every time I press send, it'll send, or the, the TX counter will increment by one, uh, but the RX counter should increment by 14. So if I click that guy, so you can see I sent, I did one send, uh, and it received 14, um, so that actually worked out great. If I try to print these guys, um, they don't print very well. Uh, but if I do this, you know, every time it sends uh, 14 characters. If your eyes were really good, it actually says hello world there. Um, and then the last thing it prints is that backslash n, which looks like gibberish. Uh, so you can see that every time I press the button, uh, it sends 14 characters. Great. Uh, so we've now, we know the code for transmit, we know the code for receive. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about today is underlying, how is this working? <laughs> like, what what's going on here? All right, so we'll talk about that next time. See you then.